Hello. What is, what's your name? My name is Tom Dunn. And uh, I'm from the Gladwin area with the people of Gladwin County. And uh, my my partner over here is uh, Ken Thompson, who's from over in Ionia. And we've been uh, uh, doing several several things over the last the last year in promoting education, property rights, and information on Agenda 21. And I, how many people here know about Agenda 21 and what it what it is? Most of you do. And you all know that that most of it is a uh, a real property grab, our property, our wealth, our strength, that the United Nations is trying to take conservatively throughout the United States, completely. With the approval of both parties. Yeah. Now, this is not a Republican, no. it's not a Democratic situation. It's an American problem. It's each one of our problems, whether it be a Democrat or Republican, a Tea Party, 9-11, it doesn't make any difference. And if most of you have, uh, have looked at uh, any of the Agenda 21 websites, if you, I'm trying, going to try to make this short, but uh, we have put together some pretty nice slide presentations that are about an hour, an hour long that if you would like those, and a couple of them uh, pertain to how to put a stake in the heart of the DEQ, all right? Um, because we're, we're very involved with uh, a lawsuit right now with the DEQ up in the Midland area. And, I mean, that the DEQ strikes right at our property, our wealth, the taking of our wealth from us. And so I've got, we've got uh, uh, several different presentations that have all the websites for Agenda 21 on it. It goes over how to put a stake in the heart of the DEQ. And you can just go from there and see where all these PUDs and, and uh, sustainable development and smart growth and all this stuff comes from. So uh, if you would like to have those or look at those and then spread them out, make copies, we don't care. But I'll get those to you, and it, and it just saves a lot of time. It saves about an hour and a half of, of real discussion and going through all the talking points that you can go through and, and how many different situations that <coughs> our local townships, our local cities, the mayors, the uh, Chairman of the boards for the uh, county commissioners. Tom, How many of them? Can you write that site oh, that there for us? Pardon? Can you write the site that that's on? Is that I'm, if, if you would like it. Oh, our e email address. Yeah. Okay, I'll. Matter of fact, I'll just pass the cards out. If Ken wants to sure. pass those cards out, they've got it on there. Send us an email, and we will send you the presentations. It's in PowerPoint. Yeah. And uh, we think we've got a. Well, we know. I'm not going to say we think. We know that we can put that stake in their heart with what we've got and with just the information and the court cases that we cite that are from within the state of Michigan. Uh, Wheeler Wolf, uh, Gardner versus the United States, that just tell us that the DEQ, the DNR, they do not have a public interest in private patented property. If your property is private and it's patented, they don't have a public interest in it. There is no third party between the federal government and you and your private property. We know how to cut them off. Now they're going to try their damnedest to make sure that they stay in. They don't want to give up that authority that they think they have. And Ken is, uh, Ken is a, a, a constitutional historian. I've got to read my notes. He remembers me. <laughs> and, um, we had talked just a little bit, so if you've got those cards, you send us an email, 
Uh, I will get those presentations out to you, look at them, read them, change them if you want, but the information that you're going to find there is, is all the information that has been verified and substantiated in there. And we talked a few minutes earlier about uh, uh, Greg McMaster's up in northern Michigan, and the House bill that, that he tried to get through, which is, I guess it's been, uh, I don't do much with the House, but, but Jack probably knows. When the House bill gets there, they just shove it, it's not acted on, right? So they, they shove it under the table. Uh, he is, uh, I believe, and my last speaking with him, is going to reintroduce uh, House Bill 5785, which is a bill that would prohibit uh, any political subdivision within the state of Michigan implementing anything that has to do with the non-governmental organizations through the state of Michigan and accept no money from them, etc. Um, and it very much copies the, the bill that was passed in Alabama, which this is a copy of that bill that was passed, and Greg's bill is very similar to that. Um, I talked to John Molinar, Senator Molinar, from up in the Midland area yesterday, and I talked to him, and he said that he would definitely support Greg in his efforts in thwarting any more Agenda 21 within the state of Michigan. Um, also, I would like to say that if uh, you get an opportunity to go to libertytownhall.com on the web, um, I don't know if many of you have seen it, some of you have. Um, it's also on Facebook. The, we're on, yep, they're on Facebook. It's, if you have, as, as a group, want to get something out, we can arrange with, with Glenn Wilson to get you on television and, and, and get some get some time in front of a camera. And we can do that. And, million cable ready home. Yeah, 22, 22.4 million cable ready homes is where they go. Ken and I do a program with him on a bi-weekly basis up there and we never know what kind of questions he's going to pop at us but we try to answer them the best we can so you know if you can go there and if you want to support something that is something to support and give us a call and we'll help you get through there uh, strength of the media that that is a media area that we can utilize and that's what he wants to be able to have as tea parties uh, 9-11s uh, Freedom 21 groups, if they've got anything to say, he's more than happy to listen and get it, get it out as much as we can. So that's my little part, 15 minutes here. we got 30 minutes. And uh, I'm going to have Ken uh, come up, and I'd like to introduce Ken, my partner. And he's going to go through a little bit more of Agenda 21 and uh, how property rights are, are really being... Uh, Stomp time. Ken? Good afternoon. This is a local issue. This is a township issue we're dealing with, with property. Uh, Bobby talked about state issues, national issues, the Republican issue. This is a uh, citizen issue. This is our property right issue. And the Agenda 21 has been ongoing for close to 40 years. It's statutory law in the federal codes. It's uh, rail banking when the, uh, I don't know how many people have railways running around their area, but the original deeds to the right-of-way was when the uh, railroad surrendered the land and went back to the heirs and assigns of the current land ownership. Well, a man in uh, the west side of the state just lost his right to his rail strip because he litigated and he was bought off, but they created a rail bank. So if I have a railroad right-of-way, what are these uh, bicycle trails they call them? It was a rail bank. So what they did is in Title 16 of the U.S. Code under the uh, National um, Department, they authorized the secretary to open up a land bank, a rail bank. So I'm a railroad. I don't want to give up my right away, so I give it to the rail bank. And the rail bank turns around and, and, and gives it to the Agenda 21 crowd for rails to trails, where they all want the bicycle to work now. They built a tremendous trail on the west side of the state through the Fred Meyer Foundation. And they used county tax money to support it. I went to the county meeting where they coughed up $10,000. Uh, 
I said, why? Oh, well, it's good. I said, no, it's not good. You're, you're, you're subsidizing the taking of our land. They don't understand it. And we're focusing in the townships. Uh, we, have a, we are an insurgency in our county. We're a very entrenched old boy county, and we, we have an insurgency in one of 16 townships. We've made a name of it. We are changing the dynamic locally. Because we, you know the local boards are incumbents forever. Nobody pays attention to them. We do, and we've shaken them up quite handily. And the next thing is to go after the purse strings. And the purse strings are the property taxes. And once you understand you're, you're standing on your property, you're going to be shocked on what they're doing to us. Because nobody reads the state constitution. Uh, we have legislatures, like Jack says, they're just like you and I, but if they're not informed, how can they make informed decisions? And the best example is House Resolution 8, which was a 154-page bill for this theater called, what, the physical clip that never existed? They got it two minutes before they voted in the Senate. They never read it in the House. And they vote on this nonsense. They don't. They're ill-informed legislatures. We have to inform them. And the best way to inform, in my opinion, is go after their pocketbooks. You stop the land taxes in your private property, they're going to listen to you. Because right now, they don't have to listen to you. Our little township spends a quarter million dollars a year on 1,800 residents. We subsidize an uh, ambulance service for $8,000 for 78 people who had runs. Well, if they added $100 to 78 people, there would be the subsidy, wouldn't it? But nobody pays attention. So when we start looking at this Agenda 21, you have the planned urban development. We're in a very urbanized area of the state. The PUDs. You know what a PUD, you don't own the sidewalk? The county does. They deeded it over. The uh, so smart growth, sustainable development were the key words. I saw a video of Hillary Clinton in 1993 saying they want to fundamentally change America. Isn't that the theme that we now have in mm -hmm. Obama 20 mm -hmm. years later? Mm -hmm. As we say, they're consistent in the message, aren't they? Mm -hmm. And the message never stops. We have to bring the message forward. And in my opinion, it's in your own backyard. And when you read Article 5 of the State Constitution, Article 9 of the State Constitution, Section 5, talks about the authority of taxing real and personal property. Now, I don't know about you all, but I know what a conjunction is in English, and I know what a conjunction is in statutory construction. <coughs> real and personal property is a subject matter. It's a conjunction. Now, the state legislature just severed the taxation of personal property. Well, who pays personal property taxes? Businesses. So why are we, in our own names, on our own property, private property, paying a land tax? We're nothing but what? Surfs on the land, paying the feudal fee? That's what we're doing. And we're doing it because the adage is, contemporary wrongs become, pardon me, historical wrongs become contemporary rights. Nobody knows what to do about it. Well, I do, and I'm going after the SOBs. Because I'm tired of them taking from me and saying, if I won't pay them, they'll take me to a tax sale with the sheriff standing there, who we've just elected, by the way. And bless his heart, he doesn't know this. And I don't get up in their faces with this. I do it by using the uh, authority of law. Pizza man. Important guy. So what we've been doing work with Glenn Wilson, bless his heart, is he's given us air time. And Glenn is a very uh, uh, freedom-minded individual. He's, he's invested his fame, his fortune, and his his life in this endeavor, and I'm very proud to be involved with him and Tom. And we have to stand up and, and move the message. And if you don't move the message in your own backyard, it's not going to work at the county level. That's why we're having such an upset in our county as we started literally the roots of it, which is the township authority. And we researched our township back to its first meeting with eight people in the room when we elected the township officers in 1837. So once you know your history, You'll understand the truth of today. You'll understand the lies that are over here in vote filler territory. And they're very good at it. And we're supporting it by failing to stand up for our rights. It's uh, the, the, the Tea Party movement is taxed enough already. Well, we are taxed enough already. Is it 40% of the taxes come off the property in the state budget? Is that 40, number about 40% of my vote right? Of the, of the of of all spendable the, dollars? The revenue for yep. the come off the property tax? Is it, is, is it that high? I'm a little generous. Yeah. One cent's too much, in my opinion. Misappropriated funding is a misappropriated legislative authority. It's a, it's a, it's a misprison of constitutional authority. Our constitution is very strong. It hasn't changed. 
They've made some subtle editorial changes, but the root of the Constitution from 1835 still exists. The Frostbite Convention held in December of 1836, the probability still exists. But if we don't know about it, anybody know about the Frostbite Convention? In Ann Arbor? Yeah. Right? And it was, it was a maneuver by the governor. Over six months, he held a convention. He called a convention in September. It didn't work out, so he called another convention that said in uh, was elected December fifth and sixth in thirty six, and it set on fourteen and fifteen. And John Cal John C. Calhoun denounced the Frostbite Convention, the mission of our state, in January on the floor of the federal Senate. Mr. Nullification himself, who didn't like the abominable tariff, he had choices. So that the uh, dynamic, the political dynamic we're facing today, has been consistent since the days of Alexander Hamilton and Tom Jefferson when they were arguing with each other over a, uh, a, a limited government or a centralized government. Alexander Hamilton was centralization. They don't talk about this today. Our educational academia doesn't talk about reality today. And it's like Bobby said here earlier, our academia is, is led by progressives. And their goal is control. They don't want liberty. They don't want free thinking cognitive thinkers. They want drones. They want serfs. And it goes back to the original point. I stand on the land, it's my land. And Michigan's a great state. It's a public land state. All the land was at one time owned by Virginia, turned over to the feds, turned over to the state. And during the premise of the feds and now the state, when you purchase the land from the state or federal control, it was patented. And then my patent goes back to 1837, if I remember right, and I'm the heirs and the signs of that authority. There's only been, and I will, there's only been a, a six, four direct taxes in this republic's history. The last one was 1861. You know, they're still collecting on it. I found litigation in 1897 sitting in the federal court on a direct taxation uh, exaction taken on land in Alexandria, Virginia in 1864 because the tax collectors refused to accept payment of the agent. And they took the land because they used the law to take our rights and take our land. If we don't understand the law, we don't understand our rights. And one person can make a difference. My wife's one person, she's really made a difference over in our county. She stands up, she gets frustrated, but when you're dealing with a system that's so taped to the wall, it's tough to pull the sticky glue away. And it goes back to the land. You establish your, your land rights, you take away the piggy bank, you watch them change. You watch these, I've never heard of giving a pension to public officials. Yeah, that started in 1945, and then they started in the state in 1947. I mean, we have a right to service, but we don't have, have to pay the legacy cost of them. 335 federal House and Senate members are on legacy costs, and they're millionaires. Why are we subsidizing them? Who's that guy that ran for the Libertarian candidacy in 1998 out of Georgia? Bob Barr, a retired congressman, saying he wants limited government, and he's backhand here, he's giving congressional pension. That's hypocrisy beyond belief. And we, I confront hypocrisy. I'm not popular, but I'll confront it. I'll, I'll play in the audience and, and, and support the candidates. I will do it in a heartbeat. And I will push my principles forward. But we have a lieutenant governor on our county. Brian, very nice young guy. And he is young, he's half my age. I don't agree with everything he does. But I agree with what he's trying to do. And that's where I stand. Any questions? I don't want to burn up the clock. I can talk for days. <laughs> well, if you have any questions, I'll, I'll close with this. And I'm going to tell you a fact. Your property is on the assessment rolls illegally because you never challenged it. You didn't know how to challenge it. And there's a process to challenge it. You start with your township supervisor. And he's going to turn to his uh, higher assessor. And they're going to say, oh, they don't know what they're talking about. Hey, fine with Danny with me. Then you're in front of the state tax commission. One real estate broker, one Democrat, and one Republican. Three people. And they don't have a clue. And they're going to say, hey, with the assessor said it's fine with me. Then you're in the circuit court in Ingham County. And Ingham County Circuit Court is the gateway to corruption. Because all circuit courts are the gateway to corruption. I know there are good circuit court judges out there. I haven't found I found one in Ottawa County out of the 83 counties. Out of the, how many circuit court judges? 500? I've lost mm -hmm. count. There are over 100 in Oakland County alone. Uh, who's that guy? O'Brien, who I didn't appreciate. 
But the point being, is there the gateway to public policy? You read the federal constitution, the states gave direct taxation to the feds. There is no direct taxation authority in our state constitution. What are they doing taxing your property under an excise? It's not a privilege for us to live on the land. It's our God-given right. And if we don't change the fundamental tenements that funds this state and gives them the control where the DEQ can walk on, the Department of Environmental Quality can walk on your property, we have the assessor come on our property and start taking pictures of our buildings. I had to pull my wife off of it. And they would put them up on the web page of the county. They had a picture of my car. They got it backed in and they had my plate. They took them down two weeks later because we vehemently protested. That's an invasion of privacy. But you have this duplicity. The assessor came on the property as an operation of law because he's always done it. I asked him where his warrant was. And he was sweating bullets because uh, I'm, I'm not a low-key personality in my community. <laughs> oh, animal control is a whole other story. And that's an ab abomination of the 1919 Act for the licensing of commercial activity for selling dogs. But they tell us we have to register a property. Why do we rent? It's our property. When you turn something over to the state, look at these gun control laws. The National Rifle Act of 1934, look what they've morphed it into. Look what they want to morph it into. They fancy coat one gun one way, the same gun another way. Well, over here, it's an assault rifle. Over here, well, it's a fast shooting 22. Huh? This is the symbols they play with. If we don't defeat the message and we stay flatlined, we're DOA. I say you stand on your rights. You assert your rights in your township, and you build from there. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, we got some pizza here.